Hello, and welcome to ClearSCADA 2010. This short video will introduce you to the basic concepts of the ClearSCADA interface and help you get the most from your ClearSCADA experience. We will start with a basic overview of the client interface and then move on to add some configuration. Finally, we will look at how a user would interact with ClearSCADA in day-to-day -day situations. What you are looking at now is the ClearSCADA client interface called Vuex. The Vuex application is made up of a number of key components, menus and toolbars for setting options, manipulating displays, printing, and all the other things you expect to see on Windows application toolbars. Down at the bottom, we have the alarm banner. This is where operators of the system are notified of alarm conditions that require their attention. On the left-hand side are explorer bars, and these allow the user to interact with the system database. We will look at these in more detail shortly. Finally, this area is a display area. This is where a user sees display pages which we call mimics, trends, list of events or histories, forms for configuration, and many other items. The database bar you can see here is a hierarchy view of the ClearSCADA database. It's structured much like what you would see in Windows Explorer, that is, folders or groups containing objects. These objects define how ClearSCADA operates. A Modbus point, for example, tells a Modbus driver in ClearSCADA to retrieve a specific piece of data from a PLC. And the point then provides the mechanism to display that data, either through a mimic, mimic display, trend, list, or some other form. A database will be made up of many such objects, sometimes very small, in the order of 250 objects or less. Or for very large systems, the database may have something like 500,000 objects. But whether you have a very large or very small system, the principles are the same. You can see I can browse a database structure simply by clicking on the small plus sign to expand database groups and on the minus sign to close those groups again. It's important that you become familiar with the database bar as this is the interface used for modifying the content and structure of the ClearSCADA database. So let's go ahead with a small example. Let's begin by logging into Vuex. This will ensure I have the appropriate permissions required to make configuration changes to the database. To do this, I select Log On from the File menu. I enter the username ENG with a capital E and leave the password blank. You will notice that my login has succeeded and the username I am logged in with is shown here in the status bar. If your alarm banner disappears, you might like to bring it back by selecting to display it from the view menu. Much like we would in Windows Explorer, let's create a group in the database for our configuration. Right-click on the database bar in the location where you want to add the object, in this case the root of the database. Select New, and then Group, and then choose the group to actually create the object. The new group is created in the database, so let's give it a name and call it My Test Group. Press Enter once you have entered the name. You'll see when I open My Test Group, there's a mimic inside called Default, and I can use this to create a display. More on that in a minute. Let's now create an analog point. We will use an internal analog point which is simply a point type that does not connect to real physical devices, but can be controlled by a user. These point types are great for testing and simulation, which suits our aims perfectly. Like we did for the new group, right-click in the location where we want to add the object, this time in My Test Group. Select New, then Internal, and then Analog Point. Type in the name of the point. Let's call it Water Level. Now we need to configure the way that the point will behave. Double click on the point in the database bar and the properties form will open in the display area. The properties form allows you to configure the point by modifying the actual properties of an object that controls its behavior. Select the historic tab and tick the box to enable historic logging. ClearSCADA will now send any point value changes for our water level point to the built-in historian for future reference, trending, 
reporting or archiving. At the bottom of the same tab, select the option to Use Raw Data. Save the properties form by clicking on the Save icon in the toolbar and close the properties form. We will now add this point onto a mimic to help provide a simple interface for our users. Double click on the default mimic in my test group. The mimic will open in design mode. The pink box at the bottom of the mimic indicates that we are now in design mode and changes can be made. Click on the water level point in the database bar and drag the point onto the mimic. You will notice this menu is displayed. This menu provides a list of the most commonly used properties of this object. Select the name property and this will add the name of our point onto the mimic. Drag the point again from the database bar and this time select value and then formatted value. The formatted value will display both the value of the point as well as the units defined in the point and we will configure the units in just a minute. Drag the point twice more, select last updated and then select value, vertical bar and up. Now let's arrange the mimic to make it nice and clear. Save the mimic using the save icon on the toolbar and then set the mimic in run mode by clicking on the design mode icon. Notice that there is no value currently displayed on the mimic. This is expected as we have not yet set any value for our water level point. Let's do that now. Right click on the water level point in the database bar and select hand control. Enter the value 10 and press OK. The values on the mimic will now update. Note that the value shows 10, the vertical bar has moved up to indicate the value, and the last updated time has changed to automatically reflect the time the point value last changed. All this is controlled by the data properties of the point which are maintained by ClearSCADA. Let's change the value again. and notice that all the values update on the mimic. But since values are often meaningless without context, let's go back and add some units to the point and maybe modify our point scaling. Double click on the water level point, scroll down to the formatting section, and add the units of M for meters. Scroll back up to the top, and change the full scale limit from 100 down to 50. Now save the point and close the properties form. On the mimic, now we have units displayed automatically for us and the scaling of the vertical bar has automatically changed to the new scaling we just configured. This shows the power of an object based model where everything is based on the properties of the objects in the database. On the Mimic, click on the point name. This menu displayed is referred to as an object menu. It provides a list of predefined actions that can be performed on this object. An operator uses these options to interact with objects in the database. For example, the View dialog shows data information about the object. Display Events allows a user to show an event list for all events on this point. You can see from this list that ClearSCADA has automatically recorded all the events for this object. Its creation, configuration changes, and hand controls where we change the values and so on. This provides an audit trail of everything going on within the system for analysis of faults, tracking of user actions, and so on. From the object menu, select Display Historic Trend. Note that the data we hand controlled is shown on the trend. Using the mouse wheel you can zoom in and out so we can zoom in to see the details of the recently logged data. Note that if you hover over one of the markers ClearSCADA provides the details of that value recorded in the historian. 
And finally, let's have a brief look at the operation of alarms. As a first step, let's have a look at our point configuration by opening the properties of the water level point. You can see that only the out of range limits, that is greater than full scale or less than zero scale, are configured for an alarm. Let's set the high high limit to be 40 and configure it as a critical severity alarm. Save the configuration and using the hand control we can now force this point into alarm. An alarm now appears in the alarm banner. It shows as flashing red because it's unacknowledged and uncleared. That means it's still active and it has not been acknowledged by an operator. Notice also that the text for this point on the Mimic uses the same color effects. This allows an operator to know the state of the point no matter where they look at it in the system. Right click on the point in the alarm banner and select the acknowledge option. Note that the point changes to a mustard color. This color means it is acknowledged and uncleared meaning that an operator has dealt with the alarm, but the alarm condition is still active. If it had cleared before acknowledgement, it would have appeared as flashing green. Now hand control the point again so it's no longer in alarm, and note that the alarm disappears from the alarm banner. The history of this alarm is stored in the event journal, so a user always has a record of what really happened. Selecting Display Events from the Object menu shows these events as the point alarm changed state and was acknowledged and then cleared. ClearSCADA provides many more features than those we have looked at in this short presentation. So you can feel free to have a look at other objects available in ClearSCADA by simply right-clicking on a database location and creating the object using the New Menu option. And at any time, you can get help on a specific object or property of an object by pressing F1. The context-sensitive help will then provide details of that specific feature. And that takes us to the end of this first introduction to ClearSCADA. Further information can be found in the online help and specifically the introductory tutorial, the Control Microsystems Resource Center, or the ClearSCADA section of the SCADA forum. Please see our website for details. Or by calling our friendly tech support team. We hope you have gotten a glimpse of the power of ClearSCADA and trust that this is the start of your own worthwhile ClearSCADA experience. Thank you.